So, hi, my name is Johan Falk. I'm going to talk about a game called Altrix. It's an adventure game for kids, as you can see, uh, but it is also aimed at their parents. They should have a fun time playing this game. That's one of the important parts, one of the sale selling points of this game. Um, it's a cooperative game for one to six players, uh, 10 years and above, I would say. And playing time depends on how you play it, because if you play the full game, it's about 90 minutes, but there's an introduction campaign. You don't start this game by reading the rule book. Instead, you open the uh, introduction campaign booklet and will be starting to play within five minutes of opening the box. Uh, this is an, uh, well, uh, from the introduction campaign booklet. There's a um, story, game story introduced. There are um, instructions for adding components to the game. And there's also rules added in five chapters and one epilogue of this introduction campaign. In this game, uh, the players are adventurer, uh, adventurers trying to defeat an evil sorceress, uh, but they don't know this when the game starts. Uh, they're going from the home village to the cadet school to tell about some nasty things happening. Uh, the introduction campaign tells uh, players to take one character sheet each and uh, add dice and hit points and mana points to, to this character sheet. They also get some flux crystals. This is the currency of the game, but they're also used in, uh, for other purposes, as we will see. There's some uh, uh, equipment, predetermined equipment added, a magic ability, and also a, a chapter card that some, some uh, one of the players takes. Uh, rules are presented, um, a few rules just in the uh, First chapter, I'm not going to, into details here, but each round in the game uh, consists of moving, drawing adventure cards, doing things at these uh, special places, um, eventually, or well, perhaps uh, paying to uh, heal some uh, something, and then the evil sorceress grows stronger. Only these two uh, phases in the uh, one, phase one and two are used in the uh, chapter one. Uh, players add um, adventure cards to the game for, for the fields and the hills, and off they go. Roll the die, uh, move through the lands, and uh, encounter uh, good or bad things uh, or uh, other interesting things in at the adventure cards. Many of the adventure cards require skill checks, which is one of the rules introduced in the uh, chapter one. It is, as you would expect, rolling three dice, uh, adding some stat, uh, skill, or a trait, uh, even if there are bonuses or disadvantages, you add those as well, and compare to a number on the card. And eventually, the players arrive at the Cadet School, which means that the first chapter has ended. They start reading the second chapter, which gives a bit more story and a new chapter card. Uh, new rules are introduced, in this case ranged weapons are introduced, and also something very important, leveling up. What you do if you use a skill, roll a triplet, which is higher than your skill value. Uh, it so happens that at the cadet school you can train using ranged weapons, uh, so the players have an opportunity to roll a lot of dice, not only the, uh, the three that have themselves, but uh, nine dice and see if they have uh, can get a triplet higher than their current skill value. Uh, at this point, the players have been playing for approximately half an hour, and the booklet says that they could take a break and come back and play another session tomorrow. But the players want to play on, of course. So the journey continues to the University of Magic. They get a bit more piece of the story, game story. This is Art Chancellor Ursula, and she tells the players and the adventurers about uh, flow in the world called flux, which controls fate and adventure. And this uh, gives sometimes flux crystals, which is an essential part of the game. Some rules introduced include using these flux crystals in new ways. You can pay a flux crystal, sacrifice a flux crystal to re-roll a die at any time. And you can also pay six flux crystals to, to select the outcome of a die. Whenever you roll a straight with your dice, uh, you touch the flow and get a flux crystal. And if you exactly match the, the required value for a skill check, you make a perfect roll and get three flux crystals. This is an important part of, of getting and using flux crystals. 
Ursula also tells about the magic, uh, the evil sorceress, uh, which introduces some kind of in-game time. I'm not going into details here, but this meter here fills up with black crystals, which is uh, some kind of uh, time ticking and strength growing for the evil sorceress, which is accelerating. Uh, the game goes on. A few more rules are, are added. Not uh, We've seen most of it already. Uh, you can train magic at the University of Magic. You can train one-handed weapons at the Swordmasters Academy. You can buy things at the home village in the general store there. Uh, there are uh, more regions unlocked as the chapters go by, uh, which means more adventure cards added. We also have more items, magic items and magic abilities added to the decks uh, when chapters are unlocked. On a larger scale, if we zoom out a bit here, uh, the game provides uh, adventure for the kids and for the adults, but, but um, drawing cards, seeing what happens, uh, making perfect rolls, leveling up, finding magic items and things like that usually brings cheers around the table. But there's tactics and strategy as well. If you want to succeed in this game and also succeed, succeed well, do well, um, you must consider a number of things. You should uh, see how do you want to grow and, and build your character, uh, well, make the adventure stronger. Which skills should you level up? What kind of equipment are you looking for? Where should I go to have a good chance of, of leveling, up, leveling up the things that I want? There are also quests I haven't mentioned before that gives you some bones uh, for going between different cities uh, on the board. And this needs to be coordinated by the group. Uh, also, you can uh, coordinate using equipment, giving equipment and flux crystals to, uh, to other members of the group. Uh, you need to figure out how to best use uh, the flux crystals and how to have the best chances of acquiring flux crystals, which is far from trivial and you need to pay attention what's happening on the board and respond to it. There's some kind of push or luck or, or race going on. Uh, the evil sorceress is growing stronger and you don't want this meter to fill up because it's bad for you. So eventually you need to head off to this uh, dark tower here of the evil sorceress. And there's also, if you play the full game, you have honor and glory scoring at the end, which you want to maximize. The end of the game, let's see. Uh, when players get here to the Tower of the Evil Sorcerers, they have to face uh, one trial of the Evil Sorcerers by themselves. Pre uh, in the rest of the game, they can uh, help each other out with adventure cards, but in this case, they must face it themselves, this final battle. If everyone uh, overcomes their trial, they win the game and can read the epilogue, which unlocks a few more things uh, in the game. Not least, uh, six new types of characters which you can use the next time you play the game because now the players have all the rules in place and can start using all the rules from start in the next game and that's it i think um, there are tons of calculations going into this game uh, to to balance things and make sure that uh, die rolls are uh, well interesting and you can uh, affect them in interesting ways uh, I feel that I have now reached a plateau on, on developing this game. Uh, the, the graphic design and arts uh, obviously need some work. Uh, but apart from that, I don't really know what I should improve. And I'm looking forward to seeing what I could improve and have uh, hopefully having game, board game developers to uh, work together with to do this. Thank you.